This is Perry Marshall. I'm here with Bill Jenkins and uh, Bill and I are going to have a, a discussion about information theory as it relates to DNA and design and biology. And uh, I would like to submit to you, the audience, that, uh, that this is an airtight uh, argument for design. And if you're skeptical of that claim, then this is the right place and this is the right video to be watching. And so Bill and I are just gonna jump right into it. And uh, Bill, welcome. Thank you. Good to have you here. You bet. And so, so I'm, I'm gonna start with, with, the, with the fundamental argument, okay? And it's a, it's a three-point syllogism, and it, it goes like this. It says, one, um, DNA is a code, okay? The pattern and DNA is a code. Number two, all codes we know the origin of are designed. Okay, and number three, therefore DNA is designed. And that's the argument. And uh, what we're gonna do in this next little while is we're, we're gonna back this up. We're gonna back this up uh, with factual information. And uh, I just wanna say at the outset, everything that, that I use to back up this argument is non-controversial, peer-reviewed scientific literature that's been out for, for the most part, 20, 30, sometimes 40 years, okay? Uh, there's some more recent books than that that I'll use, but they're still, I mean, this is very old, very well-established stuff. So, uh, shall we? You bet, let's go. Okay, so, so let's, let's, start with, let's start with the first, uh, the first part of this. DNA is a code, or specifically, the pattern in DNA is a code, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, why do we say that? Well, you know, first of all, you know, DNA is this helix, and it's got, um, it's got what we call base pairs in it, which are guanine, adenine, thymine, and cytosine, uh, which is a four-letter alphabet. Um, and, uh, and so a strand of DNA in your own body um, has about three billion of these letters uh, from one end to the other. And it codes for, and I use that word very deliberately, it codes for um, everything that, all of the instructions to build a human body, mm -hmm. okay? So it's, it's 750 megabytes of data. It would fit on a, on a CD if, if you mm -hmm. put it just in. Just barely. Just barely, if you, <laughs> right. if, you put it, uh, if you put it in that format. And so, um, and so, the A, C's, G's, and T's um, are, are arranged in triplets where three in a row makes something called a codon, um, which, uh, which then is, is translated into an amino acid, which is then translated into a protein, okay? And so when we say DNA is a, DNA is a code, here's what we mean by that is we have this string of ACGTs and they are, they are translated into amino acids, which are then converted into proteins. And this all goes on inside of cells. Yes, so when DNA is read and a cell grows from the instructions in that DNA, it is translated to uh, amino acids according to a table, which I will talk about, okay? And then the amino acids are translated into proteins, okay? And so, um, so for example, GGG codes for glycine, okay? An amino acid called glycine. Um, AAA, for example, codes for lysine. 
okay? And if you can look at any biology book or any genetics book and it will explain this table, okay? And then there's a much more complex table, which I won't go into, that creates specific proteins based on combinations of amino acids. And so this is like going from, from uh, you know, ones and zeros to letters of an alphabet to words and sentences, essentially, is, is what's going on there. And so, and so this, if, if you, uh, if, if you read uh, this book here, it's called Information Theory, Evolution, and the Origin of Life by Hubert Yaki. He explains in chapter five why the, um, this process um, perfectly matches the diagram of a communication system, which I am drawing right now, which is encoder, code and decoder, okay? And Yaki explains that, uh, that the process of going from ACs and Gs and Ts, they get encoded into amino acids and decoded into proteins that this is a communication process, okay? Now this process, was discovered in 1953 by Watson and Crick, and they're all you know famous, the guys that cracked the genetic code, mm -hmm. okay? This process was defined in 1948 by a guy named Claude Shannon. And he wrote this book, The Mathematical Theory of Communication, which is arguably the most important book uh, paper probably ever written in the field of electrical engineering. Mm -hmm. This book made the modern communications age possible. Mm -hmm. This book defined things like, well, how many bits can you send across a wire and how much, uh, how much redundancy do you have to have in the signal if there's noise and how much, like if you've got a telephone line, how much data can you squeeze through that telephone line? So you remember 56K modems? Mm -hmm. Well, that, that was as much data as you could squeeze through a phone line. And if you wanted a faster internet connection than that, then you had to do something different. And this book defined all that stuff. So are we good so far? Good. This is, this is uh, my, I love this topic. <laughs>